We know that Muse published sites are hosted on the Business Catalyst platform. In this video, I'll show you how you can set up Muse and Business Catalyst to work together so you can take advantage of all the features of a full BC e-commerce solution and still do all your design work in Muse. You can start with any Muse site. For this demo, I'm using the Maven's Coffee Shop template from Chris Kellett at MuseGrid.com. The site has two master pages. One is a really tall master page that we'll be using for the home page. You can see that it has several backgrounds included in it, and then the footer at the bottom. And the other one is for the shorter pages that are going to follow on afterwards. We've of course got the home page set up for us, and we've also got a couple of pages that I'm using for placeholder layouts, as well as one information page, the privacy page here at the end. Let me just open up the home page and we'll do a quick preview to see what it looks like. Here we can see a nice slideshow container at the top of the page. And all of our menu items link down the home page to some other content. The privacy page is linked out in the footer. And the other two standalone pages are linked into the blog and the news here in the top menu. Now to get things rolling, the first thing that we want to do is publish our Muse site. If you've worked with Muse before, you'll know that you can publish your site right here under the Publish menu. And that will create a Business Catalyst site for you. For this workflow, we don't want to do that. And that's because the Business Catalyst site that Muse will create is a Web Basics site, which doesn't have all the features of BC included in it. What we want to do is we want to make a Web Commerce or Grader site. And that way, we get all the Business Catalyst features. So to do that, I'm either going to go over to Dreamweaver, or to my partner portal, which I have right here. I'll create a trial site in my partner portal. Choose Start from Scratch so you get a nice blank site to start with. And then make sure to choose the Web Commerce site type. I'll give it a site name. And select the data center and create my trial site. I can preview it. And you can see for now we've just got a coming soon placeholder dropped in. That's because we have a blank site. And we can also choose manage the site, which will let us log into the admin. And there we can see our new Business Catalyst site with all the features that are normally included in an e-commerce package. And now that our BC site is created, we're ready to go back to Muse, and now we can publish. I'll just click on the Publish button. And instead of typing in a new name, we'll go down here to Options, and we'll choose an existing site. I'll just make sure I select the one that we just created. And this time when Muse publishes, it'll overwrite those original files and set up the Muse site for us at that same location. When Muse finishes uploading the site, it opens up a preview in our browser window, and we can take a look at how the site's functioning. I can click on some of the menu items and see that our scrolling navigation menu appears to be working okay. And I can also click on the News link, which will take us to our placeholder latest updates news page and the blog link, which takes us to our placeholder blog page. And now that we have our Muse site uploaded, we can see that we'll have two ways to work on this site. We can either edit the files or the elements right here in the Business Catalyst admin, or we can go back over to Muse and change things there. So to keep things straight, we're going to need to know exactly how these two programs connect together. Now there are really only two basic things that we need to remember for this workflow to work correctly. First, whenever you publish from Muse, it will always overwrite any file that's changed, but only the files that Muse controls. To see what that means, I'm going to go back over to the BC Admin and take a look at the file list in the Develop section. Here we can see all the files that make up our site. And the most obvious ones that are listed right at the root level are the ones we designed in Muse. So obviously all these 4HTML files will be part of the updated ones when we publish from Muse. 
Muse also sets up our styles and images. We can see the styles up here in the CSS folder, and the images folder is full of the different graphics that we're using for our design. Muse also handles JavaScript for any of our active elements, and it places those in the scripts folder. And if your design includes the mobile layout like this template does, you'll also see a phone folder with elements in it as well. Any publish from Muse will overwrite any one or all of these files. So for these files, we want to only edit them from Muse and not change them at all from the BC admin. Our second thing to notice is that there are still some remaining folders that Muse won't touch but are still published with our BC site. And those files we can freely edit in the BC admin without worrying about Muse overriding them. That includes elements in the system folder, and very importantly, the layouts folder, which controls a lot of our different module elements. Our BC site also has a module template folder, and finally, the style sheets folder and the templates folder contents. The only thing we need to do to make these two systems work together is to make sure you edit the Muse files in Muse and the BC files using the BC admin. To see how this works, let's first set up the latest updates page to use the BC announcements module. I'll go back into the Manage section, and here under Modules and News, you can see I've loaded up a few sample news announcement items that we can use for our demo. When setting up the BC module features, we can define the data and the content layout using templates from the Layouts folder. I can see in the Announcements module that I have two layouts, a detail and a list. Normally, you'll start with the list layout and each item will have a link that links out to the detail page. We can always configure BC how we want to, so I'm going to make a couple of changes to keep this page simple. Our news articles are all going to be short, so I want to just list them out one after the other on the updates page. That means for this example, we won't be needing the detail layout at all, and we'll only be using the list layout. Now this template shows the code that will be used to format each news item. I'm using the default layout that BC starts you out with. And of course you can design your own, but the defaults work well for most sites and are a great starting point. The code here is pretty simple. We've got a div for each announcement. Then we have an H2 title with the subject tag in here included. And that will give us the title of each item. Then we have an event from date tag to give us the date. And then finally we have the tag body included in a paragraph here. And the 100 at the end of the tag indicates that the first 100 characters of the message body will be shown, followed by a dot dot dot. And normally the subject tag will include a link out to the detail page. Now I'm just going to change two tags for my layout. First of all, we want to remove the link for the subject tag, since we're not going to be using the detail page. So I'll select that tag up here at the top. And from the toolbox, I'll choose the data side. And here I can find the tags that we can use on the page. Instead of using tag subject, I'm going to use tag subject no link. I'll just click here and it'll replace one tag with the other. Now I'll leave the date tag where it is, but for our listing we want to show the entire body content, not just the first 100 characters. So the other thing I'm going to do is just remove the 100 from the end of this tag, and that way it'll show the whole body. Now I can just save my changes here, and we need to go set up the latest updates page to show these announcements. Now we can see the latest updates page here. And we can use the toolbox for modules to figure out what we need to add. We're trying to add a list of the news items, so I'll go down to the news category here. I'll choose a list of news. And then we'll just go over to the pull down menu and select all items to configure our list. We get a preview of what it'll look like with our announcements in here. And here we can see the code that needs to be inserted on the page in order for us to see this. Now remember what I said before, we don't want to make any changes in the BC admin for any of the Muse pages. So even though I could insert this here, I don't want to. I'm just going to copy the tag that's needed to add the news to the page. And then I'll just close the dialog without inserting anything or saving any changes. We want to make this change not in the BC admin, but back in Muse. So let's switch back over to Muse. And we'll open up the latest updates page. 
Now, if I scroll down the page just a little bit, we can see the placeholder text that we had in here, showing us the styles that we want to use. Uh, what I like to do is leave that here for right now, and right below it, we'll insert an HTML block. I'll go up to Object, Insert HTML, and I'll paste in the tag that we copied from the BC admin. Now it's very hard to see right over here just underneath my placeholder text. So I'm going to put in a background color just so we can see it for now. We'll take that out later. I'll drop in a blue here. And there we can see our HTML block dropped in. I want to resize it so it's about the same width as our placeholder announcement. And I'm going to stretch it down so that it contacts the bottom of the page. And that way it will be set up to stretch the template as big as it needs to be for whatever announcements we have. Now we're going to have to set up some styles for this, but I want to try it out right now just to see how the module's working. So let's save our changes over here in Muse, and I'm just going to republish our site. Of course, when Muse finishes publishing, it opens up the preview for us. And I'm just going to click on the news page. There's our placeholder announcement. And look down here, we have our announcements from the BC admin have been loaded up into this HTML box that we added. At this point, you can see that we've got the first part of what we want. We've got the data coming from the BC admin and loading into our Muse page. But obviously, the styles are all messed up. Now, in some cases, when working with BC tags, you can simply go back over to Muse and put a style directly onto the data tag that you added. But as you can see here, that single tag actually created a lot of different types of content for us. We've got everything that we set up in the list layout. We've got our subject title here, our date, and then the body of the announcement. And we've got that set up for each one of the announcements. Now, if we can't set the styles in Muse, we're going to have to set them in BC, but we'll need to find a place where we can put these styles so that Muse won't overwrite them. So let's go back over to our admin console. I've still got the develop window up, and what I'd like to do is go over to the style sheets folder that we looked at before. In the style sheets folder is a special style sheet called module style sheets CSS, and this is added to every business catalyst site. It's how Business Catalyst styles up and controls most of the default layouts. Since this file is linked to every BC page, we can just add our styles to it, and it'll show up on the pages. Now this is a pretty big file, so what I'd recommend is leave everything else alone, and we'll go all the way down to the bottom. I'll even add a comment to label my styles. And down below here, we can add whatever styles we want to add to the site. Now let's go back to our page, because I've got to figure out what styles we want to add. Well, we've got our placeholder text sitting right up here at the top. And what I'd like to do is pull off the style that we've added to the title and the body text right here. A tool I like to use for that, and I've already got installed inside of my Firefox browser, is Firebug. It's free, and you can install it right from the add-ons page from your browser. You don't specifically need to use Firebug to do this. Most browsers today come with some kind of an inspect tool, but just make sure you've got one set up. The way Firebug works, I can select some text on the page, right click, and choose Inspect Element with Firebug. Now it opens up a panel at the bottom of my browser, and you can see the item that I had selected, this H3 right here. I can also see the body text below it. Over on the right hand side, it's showing me all the styles that are attached to that particular element. And we can sort of see the naming convention that Muse uses when it sets up its elements. It has the class name as the style name we have inside of the program, but it'll have an ID name that's randomly generated, and it'll change often. If I look over to the style side, I can see for that H3 heading that most of the styles are right here in the H3 page subheading style definition. What's nice about this is that once I've identified the style that I want to use, I can simply use this panel and copy that style definition directly out of it. I'll go back over to my admin console, and I can close out the Firebug panel so that I can see the rest of the page. I'll just take that style that I grabbed, and I'll paste it right at the bottom of our Muse styles. 
Now that we've got the style definitions that will make the heading look the way we want, we need to adjust the selector so that it finds our news item title. So let's go back over to our latest updates page. And now let's go down to our announcement section where we've got the BC data. I'm going to select a title that should be this style. I'll select that first one, right click again, and choose Inspect Element with Firebug. And just like before, the Firebug panel has opened up right to that element that I selected, and we can look at the style that's around it. What I see here is that we've got a div class called Announcement List, and that's repeated for each one of our announcements. And inside of that, we've got an H2. Without changing the code of the page, I'm going to set my style to any div that has a class of Announcement List with an H2 inside of it. I can even copy this class name, go back over to our admin console, and I'll replace the name we had here at the top with our new class name, which is .announcement-list, and of course follow it with space h2. Now let's save our changes. And since we're editing that file live, we should be able to go right out to the site and see what it looks like. I'll refresh our page, and now we can see our subject titles each have the font, color, and size from our original style. Let's do the same with the body tag. I'll just select part of the body in my placeholder text, right click and inspect element with Firebug again. This time we want the paragraph style underneath, which looks like it's body text for Dana. That style's right up here, so once again I can just copy it straight out of Firebug and go back over to the admin console, and we'll add that style to our style sheet as well. Now we need to apply it to the body in our news announcements. So I'll just select part of the body text from one of the announcements, right click, and use Firebug to find the style. This time we can see we're also in an announcement list, but we can target a paragraph instead. So I'll just go back over to our admin console, and we'll make this selector the same, announcement-list, and this time we'll target the P tag. Let's save that change and go see how it looks. Back over to latest updates, I'll refresh the page, and there we can see our body style has been applied as well. Now obviously the page still needs a little cleanup, but that lets us take an opportunity to test out the other thing that we wanted to be able to do with this workflow, and that is I want to still be able to change things in Muse and not break what we've set up so far. So this time, let's go back over to Muse. We've still got our latest updates page up, and I can see the announcement module that we added before. What I want to do mainly is get rid of our placeholder announcement, and just rearrange the page so that our announcements module is set up right underneath the title, and once again, it's stretched down to whatever the bottom of the page is so that it'll expand. Now that we've changed our styles, I don't need this background color anymore. So I'm going to reset it back to a no fill. And let's save our changes and publish. As usual, it pulls up a preview of our site. So let's go right to the latest news page and see what it looks like. There we can see that the placeholder announcement has been removed. And we've got all of our new announcements styled exactly as we wanted them to. Now let's go over what we've set up. We've got Muse controlling the basic layout of this page and also controlling the master page template behind it. So we can do whatever we want to this style, publish the site, and when we go out and look at it, our announcements will stay there, as long as we still have that code that adds the module tag right up here into the page. The styles that we're using for our modules are created by Muse, but that's the one thing that won't update by itself. If you ever want to change these styles, you'll actually need to go back into the admin console and replace the styles that we've placed here. But notice, by putting them in the module style sheets, Muse won't replace these each time we publish, and that's why our announcement module on the BC side of things still works. Now this technique works pretty well because we had our page, our latest updates page, as part of our Muse design. Now we've got another page in here set up for the blog. But if you've worked with Business Catalyst blogs before, you'll know that we have a few more parts to work with here than we had in our last module. Generally, the way a Business Catalyst blog works is we can link to a blog page itself. That'll be a big container that contains all the blog elements. 
Inside that page, we have a blog layout that's called the overall layout. And that'll be the generic layout for how we see the recent posts, tags, and archive. Then we have lists and detail layouts that will determine what the individual blogs will look like. That all sits on a main page. Now we're going to have trouble putting that together inside of Muse. So here's what we're going to do a little bit differently. The first thing that we want to do is we want to give Business Catalyst access to the main templates that we're working with here. I can make a BC template here in Muse simply by making a new page and making sure it's set up to the page master instead of the home. So we have the normal page here. I'll title this one BC Main Template. And in order to make this into a template, we need to add just one thing to the page. I'm going to go to the object menu and insert an HTML block. And inside that block, I'm just going to type braces tag underscore page content and close the brace. This one tag is what Business Catalyst will look for in order to use a template and place content on it. Now I'll click OK. Once again, it's a little hard to see with black text on a dark background, but it's right down here in the panel. So I'm just going to bring it up to the top a little bit, and what I want to do is stretch this out so that it fills the whole page. And once again, I want to push it against the bottom of the page so it'll not only act as a page size, but it'll stretch the page if we have more content to fill it. Now we've got a page that Business Catalyst can use to fill with whatever content it needs. Anytime Business Catalyst makes its own dynamic page, we can have it use this template. Now the first thing we'll need to do, now that we've got this template made, is pass it over to the BC side of the site. When I hit publish, that page will be uploaded right along with the other pages. Since we're not linking to this page, we won't see it in the preview, but we can go over to the admin console, and I'll switch back over to manage so we can take a look at our template. We'll just go into the site manager, and choose page templates. And there we can see we actually have two templates. One, the main template, actually comes with a blank site, and it's also blank, so that's not going to be too much help for us. But here is our BC main template that we made over in Muse. I can see our design down here, so everything looks okay, but I am going to need to change one thing, and that's this checkbox right here, default template. When I turn that on and choose update, I'm telling BC that it can use this template for any of the system pages or any dynamic pages it makes. Now we've got the page background. Let's worry about the rest of the blog. I'm going to switch over here to modules, and let's take a look at the blog first. For this site, I've already set up a blog called Maven's Blog, and it has two posts in it, so we can see how it's all going to work. If I take a quick look at the blog details, you can see it's set already to use the default template which is the template we just made. Now, the only other thing I want to take a look at here is the layouts that are going to be automatically used for a blog. For that, let's go over to the develop section again, and we'll take a look in the layouts folder under the blog. Now, you can see here we've got quite a few different layouts that we can use, but we're mainly going to be interested in three of them. The overall template, which sets the layout of the blog page itself, the post list template, which lists all the blog items, and the post template, which is like a detail page for each blog post. To keep things simple, I'm not going to change these styles, but of course you can change the layouts however you want. Let's take a look at the components of each. In the overall layout, I have a big blog container, which is going to contain the whole blog. I've got a title. There's a description if you used one. I think ours is blank. And then we have a list of all the posts. There's a few other elements that are going to be below on the page. For instance, we've got a navigation section if we happen to have a lot of blog posts and we need to page through them. And we've got a side panel which contains some information, like recent posts, tags, and blog archives. This little section, tag post list, right here is what's going to be filled up with the post list HTML file. So let's take a look at that next. Each post is going to show up with a title, a date, and the body of the post. And below that, we'll have some links, like the permalink and any comments. Finally, these post titles are going to link out to a post page, which we can use to look at each individual post. 
That also has several tags on it. We've got a title with no link, since we're not going to link anywhere from there, a date and a body like the other ones, and a list of trackbacks and links at the bottom. So you can see we've got a lot of different pieces going on here. Setting our site up to use this blog is actually pretty easy. I'm going to switch back to Manage, and we'll go back to Modules and take a quick look at that blog again. And one more thing we can see in the blog details is that the blog itself has its own link. It's just the root level of the site slash mavens-blog, which is really just the title here. So what I want to do to use this blog is to change our menu to link over to this page instead of our placeholder page. Now we are going to need the styles from it, so I notice up here in my tabs that I still have a tab from the old blog layout page. We're going to need that because we're going to need to pull the styles off. So we'll save that tab. Let's go back to Muse. And let's go to our two different templates here and update the menu. I'll start with the Home Master. And I'm just going to select the Blog Menu item. First I'll single click to grab the group. Then another click grabs me that Blog item. And I can see the link right here which is going to our Blog Layout. That's our placeholder page. So let's change that. I'll just type in a new link here at the top slash mavens dash blog. Now let's just go update the other menu. We've got one in our page master here, so we'll do the same thing. I'll just click on the menu, then click again on blog, and this time we should be able to pull down the menu and select the one that we typed last time. Now I'll just save my changes, and then we'll publish the site once again. Once again, when it's finished publishing, we're going to see the site in a preview menu, and this time I'll just go click on our blog and see how that looks. Well, we can see a lot of information down here, so we know our blog is working, but it looks like a mess because we don't have any of our styles, just like before. In this case, I'm going to go back to the tab that I saved for the Maven's blog placeholder page, and we can easily see all the styles that we're going to need. Title, date, body, and then we've got titles and links over here. So what I'm going to do is go through each one of these and grab all the styles. I'm going to use my Firebug link again, so I'll right click and inspect the element. We'll find the style that we're looking for over here, and we'll just copy it. And then I'll switch back over to our develop page, where I've still got the module style sheet CSS file open from last time. We'll just go right back down to the bottom and paste in our style. Now let's go back to our real blog page and we'll see what that style should be attached to. I'll select one of my blog titles here. I'll inspect element with Firebug. And if we trace the structure down through the layouts, we can see our blog container, which was from our overall layout right here. And down just a little lower, there's a blog post class, a post title class, and then there's an anchor tag with a link attached to it. So I'm going to use the post title class and the anchor link to set up my style selector. Let's go back over to the admin console and we'll go to our selector and we'll change it to dot post dash title. We'll use A for our anchor tag and then I'm going to add on a link selector. Now let's just save our change and let's go see how that affected our blog page. When I refresh the page, you can see our blog title pops up there. Now all that we need to do is do the same thing and capture the style settings for the rest of the links on our blog page. Now since you've seen how all this works, I've gone ahead off camera and set up the rest of the styles that we'll need. You can see in addition to our post title, I have one for the blog container H1, that'll be for the title of our blog. I have one for the post details, in this case that's the date. The post body, and that'll be the body text. And then over in the side panel, I have one style for the H4 headings and one style for all of the different links that we're going to be seeing. So let's just save these changes and let's go over and take a look at our blog now. Now you can see we've got all the different styles that we were looking for. We've got Muse controlling our template page in the back and if we make any changes to that and publish, those will show up on our blog page as well. We've got all of our styles copied from the blog layout and dropped into the admin console, and they'll be staying put even when we publish from Muse because this is on the BC side of things. And then of course we've got the elements and the layouts, which we can go change anytime we want to. 
Now I'm sure once you get the hang of dealing with all these different parts in here, it'll be much easier for you to integrate the BC module features into your Muse sites. Once again, to summarize, just make sure you edit all the Muse parts within Muse and all the BC parts within BC. And as you can see, some of those pages like this one will have a little bit of each. But as long as we can keep it straight, we can get Muse to work perfectly with our BC features.